a lot of you guys were asking me how I make the screw heads that you see on my models in some of my videos. So I'm going to show you guys a really easy technique to make any kind of screw head that you want. But I'm also going to show you how to make the base of the screw using a screw modifier. Now, if you're only here to see the screw head part of the tutorial, then uh, check the description. I'm going to leave a time tag there for that part of this tutorial. But uh, do stick around and watch the whole tutorial because uh, the other stuff is pretty useful as well. All right, so we're not going to delete our default cube, but we're just going to select everything. And in edit mode, we're going to collapse all the edges into faces. And this is just going to turn the whole cube into just a single vertex. And we're going to take this vertex and we're going to move it to the side by just one unit. So we're going to hold down control and we're going to move it to the side on the Y axis. Then we're going to extrude this vertex and we're going to move it up by one unit. Okay. Now uh, we're going to take this, we're going to add a loop cut to the side and we're going to kind of uh, move this uh, vertex to the side a little bit on the Y axis. And this is going to give us this kind of a sideway V shape. Okay. So uh, now we're going to use that in combination with a screw modifier. And as you can see, that kind of takes this shape and just uh, uh, wraps it around uh, the median point over here at the origin. And this kind of gives us this UFO looking shape. Now, uh, we can play around with this. And we can, uh, we're going to screw this, uh, we're going to set the screw setting to one meter here. Okay, because that's the exact height of this object we just created, we snapped it uh, up by one unit. Okay. And as you can see, that kind of creates this coil shape. And then we can just keep extending this by just adding more and more iterations. And uh, as you can see, that kind of creates like the base of the screw. And we're going to go up and we're going to add about let's say, uh, uh, 20 iterations there. Now we're going to go over here, and we're going to add a few more loop cuts uh, to these edges here. So we're going to take these edges, uh, or these new vertices that we just created, and we're going to push them back a little bit on the y axis. And now this kind of gives us this more realistic uh, screw looking shape, you can see that this is this kind of flat part in the middle. All right. And uh, this is also a little bit too sharp. So let's take this uh, edge as well. Let's push it a little bit closer to the middle. And this about gives us the shape that we want for the screw for the base of the screw. And now we can go ahead and apply our screwed modifier. And uh, then we have to go ahead and select everything uh, and just make sure we delete all the double vertices. So we're going to press Shift W to merge all the vertices by distance. We're going to correct the normals and everything. And as you can see, we have this very ugly uh, hole at the top here. So we have to do something to fix this. So this kind of uh, smoothly blends into uh, the screw head. And we're going to have to do the same thing at the base. Okay. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to kind of uh, uh, cut this part off. So it kind of uh, smoothly, uh, uh, this kind of a uh, coil thing smoothly kind of ends here at the top of the screw. Okay. So we're going to set our 3d cursor here at the top, we're going to set the pivot point to our 3d cursor. And then we're going to take this vertex at the end here, and we're going to scale it down uh, on the y and the x axis at the same time. So we do that by pressing s to scale, then holding shift and y to scale down on all the x's except the y axis. Okay. And then we're going to scale that down to zero. And we're also going to do the same thing with these two vertices here. So this is just going to be a kind of uh, flat line here. And then we're going to go to this part here. And we're going to do the same thing except this time, uh, just a little bit less. So this time it's going to be a little bit uh, further from the 3d cursor there. And we're going to do that a few more times just so we get a smooth transition. Uh, so it kind of smoothly blends back into the shape here. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take a vertex here from the side. And now we're just kind of affixing the geometry to make sure we don't have any uh, very horrible looking n-gons or something. There's probably different ways to do that uh, to do this. But this is just how I uh, felt comfortable. And we're going to take this uh, uh, vertex here extrude it up and scale it to zero. So it goes all the way up here uh, in line with the 3d cursor. And then we're just going to fill up some of this, uh, this uh, geometry here with some uh, triangles. Okay, it's going to work better than n gons most likely. And now this kind of fuses back uh, into just one edge here. All right. So now we can just select this entire uh, loop here. Let's place our 3d cursor at the top. We're going to select the entire loop and we're going to deselect this uh, uh, vertex at the top here, not the one at the bottom. And uh, and oh, oh yeah, we're going to deselect the one at the top. And then we're going to extrude everything and scale it up to zero uh, with the 3d cursor there. Okay. And now this kind of just turns everything into a nice circle here at the top. And uh, we can continue working with the circle uh, into something else. Okay. So once again, we're going to select everything, shift W to merge uh, vertices by distance just to get rid of any uh, double vertices. And now we have a nice circle here, which we can use for uh, the screw head. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to set our uh, pivot point back to median point because that makes it a little bit easier to extrude this up into a different shape. And we're going to extrude this into something like this, just make it a little bit longer in this part. Then we're going to extrude it up again. And uh, this part, we're going to make a kind of a, 
uh, conical shape here. This is going to be the screw head. So let's kind of scale this up. And you can kind of zoom out just to see uh, what the proportions should look like. I think mine should be just a little bit bigger, maybe something like this. Uh, but again, it's up to you. So you, you just uh, figure out uh, what looks best. All right. Let's also disable our uh, smooth shading here because this kind of looks ugly for now. And uh, once we have that, we're also going to extrude a little bit more up here. And uh, I also like to add a lot of bevels here. So I'm going to make this a little nicer by adding a couple of bevels to the uh, edge loops here. And now we need to cut in the shape at the top of our screw. So we want to make it kind of plus, uh, which uh, this is the part that you would actually put the screwdriver inside of. All right. Now let's keep that pretty simple. I'm just going to add a cube up there. Okay, I'm going to add a cube. And then I'm going to extrude the sides of the cube uh, to make this kind of a, a plus shape. Okay, so I'm going to extrude each side by about two units, let's say. And again, you can go more or less depending on uh, how you want your shape to look here. And then I'm going to select all the faces in the top and the bottom of, uh, of this plus shape. And I'm going to dissolve the faces just to get rid of these uh, extra vertices or extra edges here connecting the vertices. And this is going to allow me to make some, uh, some bevels on the edges here in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to add a bevel like that. And then I'm also going to add some bevels uh, to the edges on the sides here. Now, uh, when you do this, keep in mind that this is going to significantly increase the polygon count of your screw. Now, if you're making a screw, you're probably going to place this in uh, many different places. Or just if you're using the screw head, let's say, uh, uh, to place it around a hard surface model of some sort, you're going to use a lot of screws. So uh, this is going to uh, uh, significantly increase your polygon count. So you got to be careful with how many polygons you're adding here. But since this is just one example of one screw, I'm going to go ahead and uh, add as many bevels as I like just to make this screw look nice. And also make sure this uh, cut is not too deep or too shallow. That's up to you as well. We're going to bevel that edge as well. Okay. And now we're going to use a Boolean modifier to cut uh, this shape into the screw. Okay. So we're going to add a Boolean uh, onto our screw. Boolean modifier right there. Set that to difference and we're going to select our cube uh, up on top here. And uh, maybe I'll make my hole just a little bit more shallow here. So just push this up a little. And then I'm going to apply my Boolean modifier. And now we get this nice shape cut into the top of the screw. Okay. Now before we uh, play around with this a little more, let's just go down to the bottom. Okay. And at the bottom, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing we did at the top. Okay. So we're going to slowly uh, uh, fuse this back into some kind of a circle. And then uh, let's extrude this a little further down just to make the end point. And this is the part we where this is going to be like the pin of a needle. Okay. And how are we going to do that? Pretty simple. We're just going to use proportional editing. So we're going to select this uh, circle at the bottom here. We're going to turn on proportional editing and we're going to set that to sharp. Okay. So now let's make sure our circle of influence is about uh, as big as we want the point of the screw to be. And then we're just going to scale that down uh, once again, only on the Y and the X axis. Okay just to make this kind of pointy shape at the bottom. All right, something like that. And now I have a real screw right next to me at my table here. So I'm using that as reference. And uh, this looks pretty similar to that. All right. Now, if you do this a couple of times, it's probably gonna end up looking even better, you can make it wider or narrower if you like. But uh, you, you get the idea here. All right. So this is pretty much uh, any screw in the world looks something like this. All right. And now we can also make this thing look a little bit nicer by uh, uh, improving the smooth uh, by improving the shading and adding some materials to it. So uh, before we do any of that, let's also add a bevel uh, to this edge loop around here just to make that look a little nicer. And we're going to turn on our smooth shading. And we're going to also turn on our auto smooth, which we're going to set to about say 45 degrees. That's a pretty universal uh, value for auto smooth and works on just about anything. And now you're also going to notice some pretty ugly shading issues here on this uh, face on the top of the screw. Now, there's a number of ways you can uh, uh, you can fix this. But my favorite way, and I think is the easiest way is to just uh, uh, rip some of the edges on the sides here. Okay, so uh, all the edges that surround this uh, messy shaded face, or messily shaded face, we're going to select those uh, edges. And then we're going to just tear them with the V key. Okay. And now you can see this immediately fixes any of the shading issues. And we're going to do the same thing on the face at the bottom here on the bottom of our plus. Except you have to keep in mind that when you select the face, you can't just tear it, you have to deselect one edge here. So we're going to select everything except one edge. And then we're going to tear that. And that's going to take care of our shading issues. And now let's add a material to this. So let's go to our shading tab. Okay, let's delete this extra stuff that we don't need. And we're going to select this and we're going to add a new material. And uh, let's, uh, let's turn off the metallic all the way up. And we're going to set this to something like a light gray color, something like that. 
All right, something that you would expect to see on a real screw. And uh, we're going to add a node wrangler. So we're going to select our uh, principal node. We're going to press Control T. Now, if you don't have your node wrangler enabled, you can do that in the edit menu here. You go to preferences and then you go to your add on menu and then you just type in node wrangler. And you just uh, enable this uh, uh, add on right here. OK, so then you select your principal node Control T. It's going to add in this uh, set of three different uh, nodes. And this makes your texturing process a lot easier. So uh, we're going to open up an image and I just have a simple, uh, a simple texture, black and white texture, which is supposed to be a roughness map. And this is going to create some scratches on my screw here. Now, as you can see, this looks completely ridiculous right now. So let's just change the texture coordination. We're going to plug the generated into the vector instead of the UV. Okay. And we're also going to set the, the projection to, to box here. And this makes it a little bit more realistic. Now it looks a little bit nicer than it did before. And uh, you can still play around with some of the settings here, like you can scale it down to 0.5 or something just to make it look a little better. And then we also have to make sure that instead of this being our texture, this is just going to be our roughness map. All right. Let's plug the color into our roughness here. Let's turn this to non-color. And uh, let's also go ahead and add a color ramp node in between our uh, image texture here and the principal node. So we can just play around with some of these sliders and make this uh, texture look a little bit more realistic. All right. Now, if you want to, you can make this a little more detailed by, for instance, selecting this entire edge loop that goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the screw. And maybe you can add a bevel there just to make this look a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, less sharp. Maybe it's going to make it look a little more realistic. Again, this is going to significantly increase the polygon count. But if you just want one close up uh, image of a screw of a single screw, this is going to be a, a pretty big difference. And now you can just go around and place a screw on any uh, hard surface model that you're making. It's going to make a big difference. But do keep in mind, this is a pretty high poly screw. Uh, it is going to look very good on close up renders. It's going to help you a lot with those. But it is going to cost you a lot of polygons and render time. But thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you want to see next. And I hope to see you around.